No, no, no. I'm about to lose control and I think I like it. I'm so excited. And I just can't hide it. No, 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 no. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I want you. I want you. for my uh, extreme ridiculousness but this is a very exciting day for me been waiting for these a long time it has begun <clears throat> literally it has begun today today I started building my base go Topolis Hit me. <laughs> We're knights of the round table. We dance whenever we're able. But a ba 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 something something something. I can't remember the words. Knights of the round table. We dance whenever we're able. That's the only bit I remember. You can have another one if you want, mate. I don't. Everyone can have free songs tonight. I'm just feeling good. Uh, love, love, big child. Um, but this is. This is a next level um, production value from them, I've got to tell you. So this is just one of the bits of cardboard that sits in the, uh, in the fucking box. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I should do some tweeting actually. Uh, you will, yeah, you will be able to get all of it. Um, uh, there's two models that, yeah, minus Galahad, I think, and the Grail Pilgrim might be exclusive. So um, they all came in these neat little boxes. Um, which is awesome. Uh, and here is some stickers that they came with. Yeah, just, just kick ass. Kicking ass all over. So these stickers need to be, uh, Put on a lamp, which means I need to buy a new lamp. <clears throat> I regret putting these dwarves on my lamp now because the Camelot ones are way better. Uh, they came with a little, um, uh, whatever these bad boys are. G'day Voodoo. Um, terrain bits as well. So uh, I have started, <laughs> uh, unsurprisingly. Uh, so, I'll show off uh, some of the models I've done put together so far. Yeah, the plinth is fucking great. <clears throat> yeah, a little train set. So here we have, um, I'm going to probably try and set this to autofocus actually because I don't really need to be zoomed in super close. Yeah, you know, I just got to remember how the fuck I did it. Uh, oh yes, I think this is it. Uh, focus. Auto. Okay. Beautiful. So this one is actually literally my favourite model, Sir Percival. And this was what, this model started the whole idea, um, believe it or not. Uh, <clears throat> because I looked at his flaming hammer and I was like, man, that's so fucking sick. I reckon that looks so good in like an underground crypt scene. And then I looked up King Arthur and he was holding a flail or torch or flail torch, depending on your perspective. Uh, and I was like, man, these two guys would be fucking so sick if they had like light bouncing off each other in an underground crypt. Fuck yeah. And then uh, the whole thing just snowballed from there. Um, <clears throat> I 
think I think the Merlin uh, and Morgana uh, pairing off was an obvious choice. That was the next thing I thought of, and and having the two having a magical duel um, in the middle of the forest with the Green Knight in attendance is pretty awesome. Um, t- 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 Nah, not here to fuck spiders, mate. Uh, so I haven't, I haven't glued this one fully together. I just need to feel, gut feel this little line here. Uh, just melee part, usually. Um, this is Uther Pendragon. Put your little hands on. Put your hands up for Detroit. I love this city. <laughs> Camelot do 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 Unreal. So I've assembled four models. <laughs> uh, and this one, which is uh, a surprise for me. Ooh, drop the bitch. Didn't mean bitch in a negative connotation there. Because it's late for like. <laughs> I said I meant to say drop the son of a bitch and abbreviated. Anyway, here we go. How good is that? Comes with clear resin water. Not sure how I feel about it. Hang on, stand by. No, all should be working well. Mike should be fine. So. Probably just my voice. I'm a bit hoarse today, a bit raspy. Yeah, I, I didn't expect to like this model, um, but I, I love it. I love the the angles. Um, really, really neat. So not sure, not sure how I feel about this these bits. Um, I think I will end up using them. Uh, maybe. We shall see. Uh, but yeah, that's um, that's exciting. So those are the only four I've assembled. Um, I haven't really looked at too many of the others, but indeed, Maui, uh, pretty great. This is uh, this is my other, so this is the Mordred piece, which is going to be facing off against Arthur and Percival in the crypt. He's very 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 spiky. He's an angry, angry, spiky guy. I'm just, I'm pinging about these, eh? Poof. Get excited. Get excited. Look at this great cloak detail. It's almost like dragon scales. Fantastic. There's his head in there. Glorious head. Oh, he's got two heads. Oh, so good. Oh, that's a tough call. Yeah, Mordred was my favourite too, mate. Um, possibly because of David Araber's paint job, but... Uh, I don't know. Uh, but then I also, I also love the Green Knight. <laughs> and Percival, and Arthur. But I think Mordred was the first one where I sat up and took notice. I was like, holy shit. Um, Percival was later on in the piece. Uh, so, yeah, pr production quality for this is off the charts. One other thing I was really, really impressed with is actually the quality of the resin. So in the past, Big Child's resin hasn't been that great um, in some of the models I've bought. Uh, but the, these are really nice, nice castings. I wonder if did, did they change casters or they they just change their processes and stuff. They gave you plinths too. Look at this, beautiful. It's a beautiful finish too. Like really, really neat plinth. Bit of velvet on the bottom. Actually, gonna put that in my plinth tray. Um, all right. So we want to have a look at Galahad's horse butt, do we? Yeah, maybe that's what it is. Um, because it it. it Feels like a really noticeable step up from uh, some of the Black Sailor stuff I got. Um, 
the resin, the, the, they've got a lighter resin. I don't know if that's because it's more expensive or, or whatever it is, but it certainly feels like it has less mold lines, more crisp, um, uh, and, and a bit easier to, to scrape it. I've got them all, Mally. <laughs> I've got all of them, mate. Every single one of them, I bought them all. <laughs> Is this horse butt? Yes, here we go. Get some horse nuts. Look. Man, yeah, they, they are just. I'm so, so pumped. I'm so pumped for this. You have no idea. Well, I guess you probably do have an idea because you've been listening to me rant about it for the last forever. Oh, yeah. Little bit of horse jazz crackers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have some horse nuts. Woo. <clears throat> Um, yeah, Alana's the dark grey plastic, um, yeah, it's little anus, it's little, uh, <laughs> it's a little, uh, thing, the, the, the resin, but I think it makes a difference. Ah, oh, this model's going to be so good. Uh, so I haven't got any photos of my, of my big diorama base yet, um, because it's still embryonic. But we will share some of those photos. I won't be doing much of the um, of the base on screen, I don't think. So here's Morgana Le Fay. Awesome paint job by Krzysztof Kobolczyk for Red Ave. Ooh. Nice. Oh, just look at the, look at the crispness of this detail. Seriously, look at that. That is just even this little one is absolutely on point. And and uh, the 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 gray the dark gray resin. I I don't think it was at this standard. So it's really awesome. Um. So I'm contemplating. Yeah, me too. I'm contemplating this is this is uh, possibly sacrilegious because of how much I love the models, but I'm contemplating whether or not I do some conversions on Merlin and Morgana to have them be more action oriented, so it looks like they're fighting each other. Because one of the, the really big things with dioramas for me is you really need to have a connection. There's a big connection between the models, and uh, when there's no connection, they're just they're just models on a on a plin, on a on a base, right? It doesn't feel like they're coherent so uh, the two are facing each other and I'd be able to have eye contact but sort of feel like maybe I want them to be interacting more oh that's a great sculpted face well I did Draxy I sure did so many little birds motherfuckers boop, 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 birdie birds Oh, were you wave one, Draxy, or wave two? I was wave one, so yeah, I'm not. I'm definitely not doing the owl. Um, <clears throat> haven't actually looked at Merlin. I haven't looked at the Green Knight either. Also, okay. Come <laughs> Uh, depends. It depends on when you um, when you confirmed. I think mm. it might have been the order that they were um, bought in the first time. Not sure. Yeah. So this guy's got his his stick. Good stick. Oof. Yeah. This would be a hard conversion if I decide to do it. Uh, Maybe not that hard. So I'd trim that there. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah, you'll definitely be in wave two then, mate. I don't like this grass on the base, though. I might might not use these, these big rocky things. I like these rune bits, though, that are on the bases. Yeah, mate, I've got, I got everything. I've got everything. Literally every fucking thing. 
I got it. So this is his arm, it's holding uh, an owl, but I reckon I could change it so that he had his arm extended and he's like, like that. It is round table. Um, and the way he's holding his stick is sort of okay with that pose. And his head, which looks remarkably like, uh, well, is that Henry Cavill? Seriously. It's Henry Cavill. Maybe. We'll be using the bearded head, I think. Oh, I don't know. Because in the mythologies, Merlin was... Uh, Merlin was ageless. The wizard uh, trope. Um, mm, depending on which, which part story you read, I guess. I think I like the bearded one better. That's a great head, though. So, yeah, I think, I think we'll definitely go on that conversion. And we'll keep the owl for something else. Yeah. It depends. There's a really good book series I read by, uh, oh, what's the guy's name? Thomas. It's the Dark Ages version of um, Arthur. Stephen Lawhead. Um, really good. Grail Pilgrim. Hello, little friends. <laughs> This guy's not going on the diorama. Aesthetically speaking, he's not the right vibe. Um, but he's cool. I like his little stick. Like all of his little bits and bobs. Sort of like a happy hobbit. Yeah. Cool dude. Look this way, camera. And here's all the little bits and bobs with some, some skulls and some grails, which we're going to use. Nah, nah, I'm not going to hide in the background. He's just, it just, aesthetically, like he's just totally different tone to the rest of the piece. Just don't, just don't think it's uh, in keeping with the vision. I mean, there's definitely places I could put him, like I could conceivably put him on the base somewhere, but I won't. Just, just the scale, like the scale's different. Yeah, he'd be perfect for the, he'd be perfect for the um, thing. So you just look at those two models side by side. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll keep it for sure. It's gonna be, gonna be fun for something, even if I just paint him by himself on a little base. Um, yeah, so there's all rocks and doodads and standing stones and who's and what's it's and these little shield things and grail things and fucking. I'm so excited. And I just can't hide it. No, 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 no. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I want you. I want you. The Green Knight. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's awesome. Fuck me. Look at this shield. Holy shit. I don't think I know the Neutron Dance by the Point of Sisters. No. Look at that. Fuck yeah. It's so good. Oh, and his axe. Space toy, these are, yep, thanks Topolus. So in the, in the mythology, he has an axe, the Green Knight. So we shall probably use the axe. I also enjoy painting axes more than swords and this sword doesn't look glorious to paint, but it does look like a glorious sword. So. <coughs> Yeah, look at this look at this guy's legs. He's like wooden armor. Fuck. This is one of the best models by far. It's gonna be fucking mad to paint. I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm pinging like crazy. 
It was indeed a Kickstarter, Baz. It was a Kickstarter run last year. From Big Child Creatives. Mm, great face. I actually sent Ruben Martinez a message and asked him if I could buy his painted version of this. Because uh, I just, yeah, felt like it was such a great example of Ruben um, and what he does. It was unfortunately already sold. Wow, that's so good. Oh, oh, get a tip top baker. I'm so excited. Um, Alright, well, and they also, this is pretty neato actually. They also did 35mm uh, versions of some of the models which they gave in the Kickstarter. Um, just for the, the all in pledge. I didn't get the 35mm models, I, I lied when I said I got everything. I don't give a fuck about 35mm, but that's pretty awesome, really, when you look at it. For a 35mm scale model, how good would that be for, like, a Dungeons & Dragons fighter? That'd be so good. Merlin, wizard, fucking beautiful. Well, I might, I, might, yeah, I might actually fucking paint these dickheads. Seriously. Lancelot sucks a bit. Okay, Ranger, I suppose. Wow. I'm, su I'm surprised by that. Surprised by that. That's great. I'm, I'm, I might even paint that, you know. Fuck me. Uh, so I got all the 75 mils, and when you bought the all-in pledge, just so everyone knows, I love throwing this around. I was back at number one. I stayed up till 3 a.m. just to fucking get into that. So, I was back at number one. Mm. Early bird pledge had four. Hey, Tip Top Baker, thanks, mate. Uh, four of the uh, 35 mils included. Uh, Mini Myth, that would, that would vary company to company, but... Um, Many, many of the companies that I've done box arts for don't want the models, they just want the, the photos of the models for display. G'day, Denny Saran. So, yeah. Yeah, Guinevere, we've got her too. Actually, I haven't looked at her. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't a massive fan of this model when, when they uh, showed like the artwork of it and stuff. And it ruined my diorama plan because they initially didn't have a plan for her. And I was like, yeah, yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I had to come up with a story for her. But yeah, that's pretty cool. She's Meredith from Brave. Oh, mate. The, the, yeah, production quality. Absolutely. Leaps and bounds ahead of anything else they've done. Yeah, that's great. That's a great model. Great lines, just nice shape. Awesome. All right, I'm going to do some painting now, friends, but we can all rest easy. I can finally, finally begin what will be the biggest project I've ever attempted and what will be my uh, crowning glory as a miniature painter. Probably. Probably. It may also be awful. I may stop <laughs> halfway through. Uh, at this stage, mate, yes, and I already have someone who's expressed interest in buying. <laughs> so, that's, that's probably going to happen, yeah. Mmm, mmm. 
Uh, I tried to buy uh, one of Mark Masklin's models the other day, and uh, he hasn't got back to me about the model, so. Ah, oh, thanks, Space Toy. That's good, buddy. All right, we can do some painting now, I think. Uh, so yeah, but other than that, no, I don't think I've got anything coming at the moment that I've bought from, a, from an artist. And we'll do some gold. No, not at all, mate, I have a full-time job. <laughs> No, I tried. Fuck, I tried so hard. I kept pestering her. I was like, come on, bro. Hook a brother up. But no, she'd already sold it. And uh, I can see why. Uh, the next piece of hers that she uh, that she does that I feel like it really hits her style. Because she, she, she did that dude um, model for... I can't remember, hair models or whatever. And just wasn't it wasn't like her. I, lo I love the way she paints females and skin tones, and um, you know, Candy Chan versus that guy didn't didn't wasn't chalk and cheese. So next time she does something, and there's a few things that she's got on the pot in the pipeline that look good. She's already sent me pictures of them. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be all over that like big deno on a cream bun. Uh, <clears throat> Yes, really, I have a full-time job. Uh, so this is just a hobby, just for funsies. <laughs> if I wanted to get paid for it, mate, I could. Uh, but I don't want to because then it becomes a job and then it becomes less about the enjoyment and more about finishing things for money. And that's not what I want out of this for my life. <clears throat> hey, thanks Jagamage. Get I in motion? I was expecting my Cursed City to... Yes, yes, they're here, mate. They are absolutely here and I am frothing. Frothing! I'm so excited! And I just can't hide it! No, 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 no! I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I want you! Hey Jagger Mage, whereabouts in Spain are you from, my friend? I love Spain. Oh, I did see Beverly Hills Cop, but it was a long time ago. Oh, my friend, I will probably be very happy to go through them again a little bit later on in the stream, for sure. <clears throat> I, I do commend people that can do this for a job, and I think... Um, that can still be passionate about it and still, you know enjoy doing it. Alfonso is uh, a guy who uh, really, really is passionate about the hobby and uh, has a career out of it. So I think that's that's something that's really impressive to be able to do. Um, yeah. I'm lucky about Cursed City, man. <laughs> yeah. 
And mine was actually supposed to turn up today, but it didn't. Nope. Nope, I am a manager, a sales and operations manager for a uh, retail business. Nothing at all to do with art. All to do with sales and people. <laughs> nah, I wouldn't remember any songs from it. I'm so excited. And I just can't hide it. No, 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 no. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I want you. I want you. I'm walking on sunshine. Wow! I'm walking on sunshine. Wow! And don't it feel good? I used to think maybe you love me. Now, baby, I'm sure. I cannot wait for the day when you knock on my door. Alright, I'm walking on sunshine. Wow. Oh, it's a good day. Feel good. Feel good. We get into the uh, into the really challenging part now, which is which is building up the the sustained ability to just keep chipping away at something because as you've probably seen I tend to go through projects quickly and get a bit bored um, and yeah, having having a big project one singular project is uh, is a recipe for disaster but Talked about my plans to try and combat that. I'm feeling relatively confident, so. Oh, thanks, Daz Goomba. Oh yeah, I, I, won't be, I won't be doing any Camelot on stream, probably for another two weeks. I think that's gonna take me about two weeks to at least build the base to a, to a position where I can understand the elements. There's, the issue with the base well, not the issue, the, the, the way the base is going to work is there's going to be five individual scenes. Yep, so that, that's exactly how I'm going to approach it. Thanks, buddy, for following. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll have five separate scenes. Yeah, I think I've got the video of the base. Let me bring it up. I cannot wait till the day to knock on my door. Let's see if I can find it. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll bring it up. All right, very good. Excellent, properties. How did I, no, I think I, yes, transform, rotate 90 degrees clockwise. Excellent, excuse the heavy breathing in this. All right, so this is, this is the scale of the project we're talking about. So that's a forest scene with Morgana the Green Knight and uh, Merlin. This is a riding out from a castle wall scene with Galahad and Sir Kai. It's okay. This is uh, Lady of the Lake and Uther. Uh, then there'll be Lancelot and Guinevere on top of a mountain, hidden away from everyone else. And then there will be that scene, which is the, the crypt scene with um, the dudes. So... That's broadly, and I've got, I bought a rotating Lazy Susan that you plug into the wall, and it just spins around. So the whole premise is, it's on a round table. 
and uh, yeah, it just basically as it spins, you'll get to see one of each of the different scenes and the stories, and yeah, so that the building of the base is key because I need it to uh, I need to understand where the models exist. Uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty it's pretty uh, sturdy. It was like four hundred bucks. <laughs> it's pretty good. Should be fine. All right. What I'm observing now is that we need to go back to manual. The small models really don't cope well, but I think I can do this quickly now. I can do it pretty quickly. There we go. Cool. If I don't have if I don't have a right uh, placement of the models, then I can't I can't paint them to match the environment that they're existing in. So. That is, that is an absolutely crucial part of before I start painting is understanding where they exist in the environments they're in so that I can then paint them to interact with that environment and with each other. So that, it, it, that they won't be finished, like they won't, the, the details won't be finished and I probably won't even paint them at the basing but it just, I just need to understand how they, how they react in that environment. There's going to be four, five separate scenes, and each of the scenes is uh, is set uh, uh, in a specific environment. So one's a forest, one's a crypt, one's a, a mountainous lake scene, one's a road with a castle wall, one's on top of a mountain. And each of those scenes will have their own colour palette, kind of. I want to retain some of the. Uh, so with with a lot of the other dioramas I've done, I've had I've had elements that that were all uh, quite distinct. Like the elements, Temple of the Elements piece had quite distinct elements, whereas uh, the Fairy Garden worked much better as a whole piece. Uh, so I think what we're going to try for is. Uh, something more fairy garden esque for each individual scene, and then somehow bring all of them uh, together in, in a cohesive piece. And I think the way we're going to have them be cohesive is just in the uh, uh, the way that I paint things like metals. I'm going to try and paint metals with very similar colours across everything. So uh, it's going to it's going to hopefully be finished by Queensland Model Hobby Expo, and I'll take it to that. Uh, I look at this stage, I'd say it's pretty even money that I'll be judging Crystal Dragon, so, um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's sort of a weird one, right? You, you don't see many entries to competitions of this sort of scale, right? <laughs> this sort of grandiose approach. <laughs> Two weeks? No, it won't be two weeks. I've, I've allotted myself three months. I reckon... Yeah, you can enter in well. You can enter in whatever you want, mate. It's your... Your model. Do whatever the fuck you want with it, eh? Um, I think what I would probably... I think what I expect to happen is... The individual paint job quality not to be at a level that competes with someone like Colwell. Like as much as I'll, I'll definitely be trying my darndest to do great paint jobs on all of these models that I love, there'll be elements of them that that aren't as focused as a small individual piece. And when you're a judge, the things you want to look at is the whole piece. And so if my whole piece 
isn't it the same standard as David's whole piece? Um, how do you how do you judge uh, the scale versus you know the quality? Does the scale give you an excuse for for quality that's not quite as good? Or and that's the question that I think will not fall in the favour of the grandiose scale. I think it will fall down in which is the better painted model. Uh, I think some, some miniature painting uh, competitions have a rule where you can't have entered into a thing before, but uh, I abolished that rule from Crystal Dragon a few years ago. All it does is uh, prevent people from entering, um, and we're trying to grow the hobby in the scene in Australia, so why, why not have people bring some of their best stuff, even if they've entered it at other competitions before? Just bring your best and have a great time. Gotta tell you, mate, if you're entering something that you've entered in multiple comps and it's never won anything from 10 years ago, you're probably barking up the wrong fucking tree. <laughs> oh, good for you, mate. Not sure what uh, what the miniature painters open a uh, stance is on feedback and so forth, but the best thing you get out of entering comps is feedback from judges about what you can do better and uh, competing against yourself. Try not to compare yourself to other people. I realise it's human nature when you are entering in a competition against other people, but. could be the case. I haven't even looked into it. Don't know what it is, really. I just have heard the name. I think you guys are actually the reason I know what it is. I, I haven't looked into it any other way. So I was thinking I was going to finish these guys tonight, but I don't know if I will now. <laughs> I'm pinging too hard about Camelot. Maybe. There's still quite a bit left on him, so. I want to push the pram a lot. Let's not go to Camelot. It's a silly place. Tip Top's the one good on your mum. Thanks for subscribing, Tip Top. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot. You, you are, you're doing this for a really neat little diorama, aren't you? I like it. <laughs> That's a cool idea. Or some swallows. Your Golden Demon entry, I believe. Phoenix. Warhammer Squad. I was watching your stream. 
Hey, War Machine. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, I'm sorry that that is the case, mate. I was hopeful you'd get a banger. Unfortunately, you got what I got. Which was a dead set piece of dog shit. <clears throat> Yes, sadly, not unexpected, sadly. Mm. Yeah. It is It is a fucking stitch up. Because I reckon I paid 30 bucks for this. Because <laughs> you used it twice. <laughs> you fuck off. And then I, because I was a fuckwit, right? I, I was at the shop the other day. Oh, this was before I used it. And I put it up there, you go, 31 bucks. I bought another one because I was like, oh yeah, I've got to try that red grass one out. Yeah, I'll buy another one. I'm sure it'll be good. Maybe this one will be good. Oh, it's inauspicious. <laughs> Feels a little bit better. Oh, T-Pain. What, what? Maybe it'll be better. I'll add it to the rotation. We'll give it a crack. 31 bucks well spent, I'd say. Oh, yes. I believe you aren't the only one with that experience with those brushes, mate. Yeah, this is the Raphael. I, I, I just, I was saying the other night um, that it's been probably a month now and they're starting to drop away in quality. Still usable, still usable, but noticeably, um, noticeably not as good as they were. And this is about the time when you really, you find why the Windsor and Newtons are the superior brush because, um, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't degrade in quality pretty much at all until you get to that, um, when you've pulled away bristles, like you pull away the stray bristles and stuff, you pull away too many of them and it doesn't even really degrade in quality. It just gets, the bristles get too small to be able to do stuff. That's my experience anyway, like, with the good ones. Um, it's, it's okay. It's okay. So, it's certainly better than the recent uh, stock of Windsor & Newtons I got. So, that's, that's what I needed. I needed a brush that I could just get painting with, and I've, I've got that, so... Thanks, T-Pain. Uh, let me show you some of the other stuff I do, mate. This is uh, this is usually what I do. This sort of stuff. A bit bigger. <clears throat> and this is what I finished on stream the other day. So, yeah. So we're painting some fun little vampires at the moment. You're a part of the Rebel Alliance and the traitor. Take her away.
he must have done a bit of a bit of stalking because uh, probably wouldn't have been easy to find. You know, I would have had to go back a long way through my Twitter or been very adept at searching. Uh, yeah, Space Toy, the, the Winter and Newtons of the last few months and years have been just so far behind the quality that they were for the past 15 years of my painting career. So to have... Um, yeah, to have them be so bad recently is, is just really, was really upsetting. I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how I'm going to keep painting. Like, but I thought oh, I'll try some other brushes. And yeah, they, these have been a good enough. So, good enough to get by. So, feel free to give these Raphaels a crack because I think you might find them okay. to do it I suppose yeah he doesn't paste anywhere near as much as me that would have been easy easy to find smart you g'day Ajidal uh, I've been trying to learn how to do non-metallic gold with my AK third generation paint so these are the only colors I've used on this uh, Hull Red was the base coat, Ochre was the next layer, Sahara Yellow was the third, and then all the way up to Icy Yellow was the last highlight colour. And I am going to give them a little wash in this Nasdreg Yellow contrast paint later on. Whoa! It's exciting! It's exciting. Master Chef's exciting. <laughs> I imagine you would. I imagine you would. Get out, sleepy slang. Right, it's time for skin tones. Skin tones. to finally be able to start my Camelot diorama after talking about it non-stop for the last forever. Feels good, man. Feels good. Oh, T-Pain, good for you, mate. Um, 
no, there's there's uh, quite a lot of good brushes out there. Um, a lot of brands. These ones are the ones I've been using recently. They're a Raphael 8404. And I find them uh, to be very good. I would recommend them at the moment over um, the previous brand that I would have recommended, which is called a Windsor & Newton Series 7. Uh, Windsor & Newton were kind of like the Ferrari of miniature painting brushes for a while. But uh, yeah, recently um, their quality's dropped off a bit. So the Raphael's would probably be where I'd steer towards. And if you're not, uh, if you're not experienced with painting, you will notice a really big difference um, with, uh, with comparing these brushes to um, the basic Games Workshop brushes. Um, well, it's been a long time since I've used a Games Workshop brush. Are they all right? Couldn't say for sure. Hello, Nicky Jaguar. <laughs> I don't follow as much Formula One these days. Randall will tell you I was I was right into uh, I was right into Formula One for a few years. Getting up to watch all the races. Are they shit now? Are they Ferrari? Well, I suppose they were shit. I was watching when Ferrari had. Kimi Raikkonen driving, I think. I feel like he was driving for them. It's been a long time. So I think, I haven't decided yet, I think we're obviously going to paint uh, the wise woman next, as voted by the people, the great people of uh, Big Deno and Stream. I think we would, uh, I think we will maybe do some Cursed City models after we finish up with the um, wise woman, before we dive into Camelot. That should be enough of a break between uh, now and then, that should probably be about two weeks painting those things and wise woman yeah I was, I was mad mad keen on the web on the Webatron um, yeah back in Weber days it was a chance of winning the premiership one year with Red Bull and what was that little what was that little fuck with a Vettel Sebastian Vettel I used to hate that guy Because he was so good. And he was so unlikable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the wise woman we're going to do... Um, we're going to do her as an homage to Natalia's version. Not going to be quite that uh, out there. But that's the plan. There was there was one or two races before that one that that Weber just absolutely lost the plot, and I reckon he cost it. He cost it for himself. Cost him the championship that year. That was devastating. Um, yeah, he did. He, he did. He did become more likable, but by that stage, fuck him. Yeah, so I think what we're going to try and do is float somewhere between the two spectrums. The have a very uh, like earthen um, vibe with some starry elements and some blue tones, 
That's the plan. I've got to think more about it. We'll think more about it before we go. Painting her probably on Saturday or Sunday. Will be when we'll start. It's a novel thought. Now I was thinking, I was imagining sort of like, um, like she's she's worshiping the the sky. Um, she's Native American worshiping the sky and sky spirits or something. And one of the animal spirits is moving through her, something like that. Just just that's sort of like the the concept. And then thinking about how that uh, is played out on a model, I don't know yet, but got to aspire to something, haven't you? Um, I mean, corpse paint, let's do it. But yeah, may maybe leaning a little bit more towards evil, maybe. I don't know yet. It's not. Uh, it's not been something I've given a lot of thought to, yet. Because I'm not painting it yet. Why can't we be friends? Why can't we be friends? It's because I don't like you at all. Depends how much things have changed. If they haven't changed enough, then the feedback I'm going to give you is go back and keep painting. Feedback is important and good. Constant feedback. Constant feedback is bad. Because then you're not doing what you think you should do. You're doing what other people tell you to do. That doesn't result in growth that results in just doing what you're told so having said that if you still would like to post pictures I will happily have a look wow gonads hello Clinton Hope you're well, mate. Dadaroo. Hello, mate.
I sure did. I sure did. I even started assembling them. I've assembled four of them. Oh. I'll show you. I'll do. I'll do another little little chantelle in a minute. What colour does this fucking thing want to be? I don't know. Yeah. Fuck you. This guy's so cool. Oh, thanks, buddy. I'm glad you feel that way. Hello, Hans Peterson. Yeah, it's a bit of fun. A bit of fun painting and chatting with some cool people. And the other people that come along. <laughs> they were still cool people, I suppose. Um, boo, 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 boo. Yeah, you know what? I think we're going to have to... I think we're going to have to do that in non-metallic metal. Still up in T-bar, mate? Hey, Rectum! G'day, mate. What's going on? Giblet. So that is exactly why I wash it out in the water. And then I wipe it. And then I, to make sure that it's still a point, I do that. So I'm not actually like licking it or sucking any paint or anything. I'm just using my lips to bring it back to a point. And then I grab more paint. Um, and these are Raphael 8404s that I have switched to recently, so. Oh, see you, Voodoo. Thanks, buddy. Mm. Yeah, I think we'll do it. I think we'll do it uh, bone-coloured. Why not? Uh, well, recently, the... Windsor and Newton Series 7 uh, have had some real quality control issues. I've had four of them uh, where they just haven't kept a good point. The quality of the bristles is still good. Like, I've still got some here that I, that I use, like this one here. So they're still, they're still manageable. But you, you, don't, uh, you don't see them just keeping the same level of point as they used to. So, um, yeah... Awesome, mate. Haha, giblets. Cool. Yeah, I worked in Dolby for a few uh, for a few months. Nice little place. to stay at my little hotel room and uh, have really nice surf and turf. I used to take my miniature painting models, my little my little travel kit, and do my painting up there. Um, Phoenix, I, I will say this to you, mate. Um, they are not as durable. So this is now probably a month, and as you would have seen, I do a fair bit of painting, and they're they're not they're not as good. And Windsor and Newton would still be kicking along, um, but these definitely are noticeably uh, less impressive. <laughs> definitely, definitely do it, mate. I may be biased, and in fact I certainly am biased, but Brisbane is uh, one of the best places on earth to live. 
as long as you can handle a bit of hot weather. Well, I'm hoping that the Windsor & Newton quality control issues will, will go away and we'll have some good ones that I can buy again soon. Can't seem to buy them anywhere at the moment, so it's hard. Yeah, in the meantime, these are these will keep me going. The, the important thing for me was I don't, I don't feel hampered using them. I don't feel like I'm, I'm using a brush that's like I've got a hand tied behind my back. Alright, very soon, very, very soon, we're going to have another look at some Camelot models. Camelot. Because we'll be waiting for some uh, contrast paints to dry. Yeah, love a contrast paint. I did. I did almost go to. Uh, I did almost go to Europe. I almost went and worked for. Uh, Steamforge Games, actually, in a games development capacity. I had the job offered and I accepted the job and I applied for my visa uh, and I informed my current job that I was moving on and uh, yeah, the visa application, I didn't hand in a resignation, I just told them it was happening so they could, uh, they could prepare and uh, yeah, the visa application uh, stalled for a variety of reasons and I never ended up uh, getting to go um, and it's a shame I would have liked to uh, it would have been a great opportunity and a great time to do something different as a career and um, would have been amazing to live in Europe I was actually really excited to live in Europe to be closer to the great the great masters of painting miniature painting, that was one of the main reasons I was like, yeah, I want to do this so I can just pop over to Spain and do some classes, how good, living in Europe, how amazing would that be? I was going to live in Manchester, um, in the UK, which is where Steamforge is based. We picked out some apartments to look at. Yeah, well, look, Steamforge is actually travelling pretty, pretty fine, mate. Um, but at the time, um, they they were uh, in some pretty dire straits. So, uh, yeah, and I think because uh, I, I I was I got on really well with the uh, with one of the creative um, people in in Steamforged, and he was the the driver around getting me to come work for them um, but uh, he was a bit concerned that it, that maybe it wasn't going to be a great move for me and, and he actually sort of said hey we're going to um, not uh, not put your visa application through okay folks are what was interesting um, was the actual the type of visa I had to apply for so at the time, I'd just turned 30, and um, you can't actually apply to, to work in the UK um, if you're 30. Um, there's, a, there's a type of young young person visa, I don't know what it's fucking called, but you had to be a certain age, 30 or below, to be able to apply for this visa um, to work in the UK, and I was, I was too old. So I had to apply for a, a, a visa which is called a skilled worker visa, and we had to be able to prove that uh, that I was the only person uh, or had a skill set that um, anyone else uh, in the UK didn't have. Um, so, yeah, it didn't end up. It didn't. It actually not fully dried, mate. But but I like to just work things when they're a little bit um, wet. You can have uh, you, know, you can add some interesting little nuances to things. So. So 
It's not fully dried, but close. Yeah, it would, it would have been interesting to see how, how um, it panned out. I think it would have been a great experience, but uh, the one thing that I was actually that I was regretful of was um, at the time I'd been with my existing job for 14 years. No, how many years had I been with it at that time? It was five years ago, so I was 33. Um, so yeah, it would have been would have been uh, 12 years. I've been with my current job for 17 years. So yeah, I'd been I'd been 12 years with the business, and um, yeah, it's just that level of being able to change that level of change was a bit nerve wracking. But I was excited to do it. I was excited to mix it up and do something do something crazy. Yeah, it would have been awesome to go to some uh, some premiership games and yeah, just my best mate Koki, one of my best mates, Koki, he's a Man City fan, so I was going to go to a Man City game and send him pictures of it. That was my plan. It's going to be great. But yeah, it didn't didn't work out, and um, as it turned out, uh, um, I got married around the same time and without going into too much detail uh, things ended rather abruptly and uh, not expectedly uh, on my end and that was around the time we were about to move overseas and I was then like well this is it this is the time I've got to go I've got to get out of got to get out of here and yeah, so, uh, but in the end, it just it didn't work out. And um, what I feel now, with my life as it is now, I feel like it was um, probably for the best that I didn't end up going. But now I'm not in the creative field, mate. I, I'm a sales and operations manager. I have an extremely uh, people-oriented, sales-focused uh, retail job that I like. I like doing I work with good people. Yes, very serious. Very sad. I do, Frog Jim. I'm about to show them all off again, mate. I'm very excited, so uh, let's do it. Let's do it in one second. Right, cool. So he's looking cool. So, oh yeah, my little war bear looks great. That's that's my second job. I'm gonna get some. Oh, okay, I'm gonna get a beer. Then we'll look at the vampires as a group, and then I'll talk about the bases, and then we'll look at Camelot. One sec. I was almost a professional singer on Australian Idol. Like I nearly did. I nearly got it. Nearly got through. Um, but yeah, in the end I didn't, um, went to workshop, yeah, that'd be fun, it'd be nice, it'd be nice to do something like this for a, for a job, but the one thing, <laughs> so funny. the one thing I, I say all the time is this, it, when it's a job, you, you lose, you lose that passion, right, you just, it's not about, uh, good for you, mini MF, good decision, uh, it's not about the the joy and I think that's the thing that I I get every time I sit down to paint is I just love doing it and if you have to do it you have to do it all of a sudden bang it's gone and yeah so there's my vampires they're almost finished well so all we'll do is we'll do the bases and we'll paint the edges black and then there's just like little knickknacks and details to do to do on them to finish and this guy's probably got more than the rest but um, yeah I like I like how they look Got some, I've got some sort of different skin tones in there and different tones, but might need to might need to work on the reds a little bit more. I think maybe we shall see. 
I did say that. <laughs> Yeah, it's just it's such a, a surefire way of fucking crushing your, your excitement and enthusiasm for something. Like, it, even even just doing a commission job sometimes. Like, back in the day, I used to do commission jobs. I used to fucking crush my spirit for painting. I used to just be like, nah, I'm done. I don't want to paint anymore. I don't stop for six months, so... Uh, all right, yeah. So look, I got I got my Camelot models today. Um, it's going to be a massive diorama, massive diorama. <laughs> G'day, Mike Lind. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, it, it it'll crush you. It'll crush your soul. It'll crush your spirit. So the, I do I do commission jobs now, um, but I'm very clear when I when I take on commission jobs. I say um, I'll happily take on this model if it's a model I want to paint, and if I get to do whatever the fuck I want. That's it. If you let me do it, I'll do it. Otherwise, no, not can. And here's my price. Uh, if I can be like double my normal price, not double, but <laughs> um, yeah. So you just you basically say this is this has got to be um, my way, or I'm not going to do it. And that's so that I get to do it because I want to do it. You know. Uh, so this is um, this is one of the Camelot models. Um, this guy is Sir Percival, um, fantastic, and he, let, let me, let me just play the, this again. Is he, how, is that, that's on now, isn't it? How's he going? Or is it later on? It's later on tonight. This is my diorama that this guy's in. I'll tell you when this guy's on screen. So there's Merlin, Green Knight, and Morgana in a forest, Galahad and Sir Kay on a, on a road. Uther standing on rocks and Lady of the Lake rising up out of the water. Yeah, I hope he does. Lancelot and Guinevere on top of the mountain. And here, there's Arthur, Percival and Mordred. So they're in a little crypt scene underneath the mountain. So the whole premise, and sorry for everyone that's seen that like eight times. The whole premise is that we're going to have a, a rotating table. And... As the table spins around, um, a, a little scene will be will be at the forefront, and then it will spin, and there'll be another scene, and there'll be another scene all the way back around. So it's on a round table for starters, which is just fucking so good. I'm the best, and uh, yeah. So each of the little scenes is going to have the Camelot models in in sort of storylines. So the Percival um, uh, is uh, that the whole concept is that you, in in the Arthur and um, mythology, uh, Mordred's his, his half son, um, or his, his son with his sister. So, um, half sister. It's been a while. Uh, and uh, and Mordred actually wounds Arthur um, so badly that he has to return um, uh, Excalibur, and he goes off to Avalon. Sure, it does depend on the version. He goes back to Avalon and. Um, and uh, never, never heard from again. Uh, so this this scene in the crypt is supposed to be Arthur and Mordred facing off, and Percival's trying to fuck him off. Um, but the coolest thing about this particular scene, and here's the Arthur model, um, is uh, that these guys are. Where are you, Arthur? There you are. Are both holding like lantern things, torches. So it's just going to be. I'm just going to be able to bounce light. So they're going to be standing like this, I think. Uh, roughly. So we'll have light flickering a lot here, and light flickering a lot. So, this, so Percival will be more in light than Arthur. Arthur's going to be lit from sort of this angle. And there'll be orange bouncing lights and stuff. And they'll be facing off against Mordred. So that's that's what I'm thinking. I do actually, let's, let's make a decision right now, actually. So I'm on the fence on this one. Stand by. Uh, so this is the sword that, um, one of the swords that Arthur comes with, which is a cool little sword. looks Looks good, and I like the pose. Looks like he's out to fight, which is what he needs to look like when he's facing off against Mordred. But it doesn't look like an Excalibur. This. This is Excalibur. 
but then he's got a very reserved pose and he doesn't look like he's ready to fight. So what I was thinking was taking this and putting this there. What do you reckon? Thanks, Master Troll C T D C D D C. Like that. Looks big. It's the only problem. Looks really big. That yeah, that that's that's the only thing I look at it when I go, this this looks like realistic and Elegance a good word for it, Phoenix. Um, but it doesn't feel like Excalibur. Whereas this is fucking a specimen. And it sort of looks fine standing like that, right? It looks like, yeah, that makes sense. But when you take that off and put it here, I don't know if it's going to feel right. Like the size of it. It's just going to feel very, very big. And he's holding it out just like... So, I'm leaning towards the big one at the moment. The other lady, the lake's already on her way to her new owner, mate. I haven't got her. I can show you what she, what he looks like next to this lady, the lake. The other lady of the lake was definitely smaller, definitely smaller than this. <laughs> yeah, that, that that's the one thing that's been stopping me from just pulling the trigger, because I look at it and I go, ah, oh, it's a fucking awesome sword and it looks like an Excalibur, but it just maybe looks a fucking little bit too big, imagine it's sitting standing there, is it too big? And then I come back to that. I think I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to do it. I just got to... I just got to convince myself it's the right play. He's King Arthur, right? He, need, he needs a fucking sword that's a specimen. I could alternatively try and find another sword in my bits box. It's a little bit more impressive than this one. Um, but the, the po I just really like that pose, right? He's just standing there like, I'm ready, Mordred. Impassive, but ready to go. Like the king, the king himself. So, yeah, my diorama is going to be absolutely ridiculous. Um, I don't know uh, how long it's going to take. I don't even know if I'll finish it. I don't even know uh, if I'm good enough to do half of the plans I have. But I'm going to give it a crack. Because we're not here to fuck spiders. Have a look at one more model. And I'll get back to painting vampires. Yeah. This guy's great. Absolutely glorious. This fucking head, man. Look at that. Oh. I've talked it up now, right? So I've got to, I've got to at least give it a crack. <laughs> got to at least give this fucking diorama a crack. And it's not that I'm not confident I can I can do it. It's just the scenery elements is a really big component of this, and it's just not it's not something I've done a lot of, and it's especially not something I've done a lot of when you talk about the amount of scenery that I'm going to be trying to fucking put together. It's epic. But yeah, we only live once. This is nicely sculpted fur, actually. Oh, that cloak's so good. You know the other thing that's great? Because the fucking models are going on a scenic base, I don't have to paint the fucking backs. Suck shit, Gavin. I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled to bits about my diorama, and I'm thrilled to bits about these models. The next few days, I'm just going to put them all together, pin the bases, fill the gaps, and then I can start playing around with the scenery. Um, I'm waiting on my, my guy doing 3D printing for me to finish up. He's, he's actually finished some of the stuff, so... Uh, look at that guy. Who's a pen dragon? Yeah, they're fantastic. Look at that. 
I like that pink glow too. I don't think I'll do pink. I think I'll do fire. I could do purple. Water. Aha! Philanthro Pizza! Yes, you and me both, mate. Because as you know, things evolve a lot during my projects. Well, I think I want it to be purple colours in that scene. Orange and purple. Because I think that would be good. Alright, let's do some crazy wet and wet blending. For the bases on these. Let's find a nice green we can use. Dark green from this AK looks good. And then maybe a bit of blue. Didn't get any good blues actually from my thing. So let's try signal blue from model air. What's a nice grey colour we can use? Do, 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 do. Let's use the, oh, maybe I should try one of my AK greys. What's this colour? Leather brown, no. Black red, we'll definitely use this pastel blue. Yeah. Ooh, this is interesting. Yeah, man, I can't wait. I can't wait for you to get them. It's going to be fucking awesome. This is like... Possibly my favourite thing to do is paint rocks. As dumb as that sounds, I just fucking love painting rocks. <laughs> Alright, let's use this great, fantastic red grass brush that we've got. And uh, let's, let's do it. Let's crack on. So what we're going to do is uh, add some magic mix to the uh, colour. I could see myself doing that. Alright, so we do a little bit of a little bit of this gear. And we're actually going to dry that with the hair dryer. A little bit, not all. Yeah, it is. I'm doing well mate, I hope you are also. Recovered from your recent 10 minute suspension. Nerves are a good thing, mate. Means you're getting yourself out of your comfort zone. Which means you're right there ready to do some learning. Whee! Uh. Huh. 
Mate, just have fun. You'll make mistakes. That'll be fine. You can't go too far wrong. Um... Probably two things that I see people do that I think, oh yeah, you can always use more paint than you think you can. Especially true on larger models. Uh, so don't be afraid to throw some paint on there. And uh, just enjoy what you're doing. Like, it's supposed to be fun. Enjoy the process. Don't be discouraged if your work doesn't look as good as some of your heroes. Because mine never looks as good as my heroes either. So that's okay. As long as you had fun, it's good. Well, I hope that uh, that my words haven't done that for all of my friends' kickstarters, <laughs> but it is it is a it is a thing. I, I, I committed to the full pledge the other day, not the nine hundred dollar one, but I upgraded my existing early bird pledge to include the two models, uh, the, all the extra models except for the two gigantic dioramas. Uh, it was uh, hull red. Uh, ochre, Sahara yellow, and ice yellow. Yeah, I, they both look great, um, but if I'm gonna, just, what I'm leaning towards at the moment is doing another stupid fucking diorama with all the models on it. Have a big battle scene. This time, instead of circular, I wanted to have it just be like a like a straight battle scene because they're all in pretty aggro battle poses. Um, so, like, just have a square or a rectangular battle scene, snow environment, them fighting over Hyperborea. The Romans setting things on fire behind them. Something like that. That's what I'm thinking about doing. <laughs> Which is a fucking dumb idea. Because <laughs> fuck me, I'm just going to basically finish this fucking King Arthur one and it'll be like, oh, here's some more fucking models for another stupid diorama. Woo! You absolute fucking peanut, mate. But I don't know, I like... I like the... You know what it is? I was thinking about it the other day. I was like, why do I keep fucking doing this? So when I was a little fella, when I was a little tucker, I used to love, you know, these things. Just the, the models and the whole, the whole hobby and, you know, model train sets and all that sort of stuff. And I just, I never had the money. And then when I got older, I did have the money and I didn't have the skill. And so I've tried many, many times in my life to do really cool stuff that I'm super proud of, like dioramas and, and miniature painting and stuff, and I've always fallen short. And the last few years, I hit this point where I'm like, hang on a second, I think I actually can do this now. And so I've started doing stuff. That uh, makes me feel really happy about my hobby and how much I love doing little toy soldiers and that sort of stuff. So I just keep I keep putting myself myself into these situations to do crazy dioramas because it's exciting that I can do them now and not feel like I'm underwhelming. If that makes sense. Probably doesn't make a lot of sense I don't know if I explain my feelings all that well. Just I've been passionate about this hobby that for such a long time it's cool to be able to create stuff that little me would have gone it's fucking the coolest man it's 
Benny, I, I, I'm generally pretty pleased with the stuff I do. Um, I think the two the two most recent things I did that I'm most proud of is Maddox. Um, the uh... see you, Dadaru. Thanks, mate. Ah, oh, awesome. Oh shit, I missed uh, I missed fucking Mini MF's skeleton. Let me have a look. Where the fuck is it? Have I scrolled too far? I've scrolled too far. Where is his skeleton? It's good, mate. I like the texturing. Colors feel pastel to me. Um, yeah, Daphne was another one I was pretty pleased with. Um, Sheep Rider I loved. thought that was one of my best recently. Um, Oz. Oz Diorama was great. I don't know, mate. I... I'm not usually unhappy with what I do. Of course. Pop it on there, mate. Pop it on the stream, I'll have a look. Uh, no, Instagram's fine. Just uh, just pop the link in the chat there, and I'll uh, I'll bring it up. Yeah, I think Oz was probably probably the best of the dioramas I've done thus far. Alright, just let me quickly spray these things with grey. When I use the term spray, I don't mean literally, I just mean quickly spray them. Yo, lifeguard Leroy, what's happening? Um, alright, alright, uh, this one, here we go, boom! Haha, <laughs> Leroy, I am from Queensland, I'm from Brisbane, however, that's not aircon, it's my fan. <laughs> and you also used the wrong yaw! Alright. Hey, it's pretty cool, mate. Pretty cool. Uh, I, like, I like the glow from underneath. What I'm finding at the moment, um, and this is a, a general uh, piece of advice I usually give a lot of people, um, everything feels quite similarly valued. So you don't have a, a clear gap of values. The main area where you where you've got it right is that that upper plate on the neck there is a high value gold color, um, which sort of stands out from the rest. 
whereas the other stuff it all feels very similarly toned so I think you may want to look at adding some some dark elements so change that gray to be darker um, or the black to be darker and, and increasing the, the the highlights on the gold um, and particularly the skin um, the other the other thing aside from the colors down the bottom the uh, the, the desaturation on the piece is a little bit too much for me I, I would think a little bit more uh, color a little bit more intensity in the skin would be uh, would be cool so but good work mate keep giving a keep giving a crack keep chipping away it's all painting mate it's all great let's have a look at this one from space toy because I actually saw this on my grams when I was scrolling the other day and I was like not bad not bad So yeah, this is uh, this is Space Toy. Been been following your stuff for a little while. I think I follow you. Yep, I do follow you. It says they're following. Um, and maybe it says following. Yeah. It's um, yeah. The thing I like most there's that there's that um, value difference there. You've got really high value skin, but the green, even though it looks high value, it's actually a little bit lower value, and you can see the difference there. Lots of intensity of color in the skin, even though you've got sort of desaturated skin tone. There's lots of nice, interesting colors through there, which is cool to see. Um, I really like how this is shaping up. I, I'll, I'll provide you this feedback. I think the metal is weak compared to the other elements. I, I, I guess it's not finished yet, but it doesn't have that same level of, um, you know, really nice, nuanced uh, colors value shift it really um, stands out to me that it's not anywhere at the level of the rest of the piece so um, maybe something for you to tweak um, but very cool yeah it's great great blends really nice um, and looks like a model that you're enjoying painting I feel like you can tell when someone loves what they're doing like you just you just can feel oh, I'm really enjoying this so yeah Do, 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 do. And I see your true colors. That's why I love you. So don't be afraid to let them show your true colors. Beautiful like a rainbow. Dun, 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 dun. Show me a smile. No, these ones are actually Crimson Court from uh, uh, Warhammer Underworlds. But I do have Cursed City coming. I should be picking up tomorrow, actually. Assuming it arrives at my, my place of work. You can lose sight of it all, but the darkness inside makes you feel so small. <laughs> it's cool when you got friends, mate. Friends in high places just make stuff happen. Just being wildly popular on Instagram. Just being a celebrity, man. And as of last night, there was actually also a copy at the uh, at the local little fucking shop at Annerley. I don't live near Annerley, but I was at my mate's house for games, and he was saying that there is one at the shopper. So. Uh, I'll tell you right now, um, my my actual reason for buying it, I bought it before we found out it was a um, limited run, was to paint the models. <laughs> um, the game, the game, we play so many fucking games, it's just like, it needs to be awesome for us to actually even want to play it more than once. So I think what my plan is going to be is I'm going to paint it and I'm going to play it uh, once or twice with the boys on Tuesday night. And if we like it, um, yeah, maybe I'll keep it. My expectation is that we won't be enamored with it and so I will probably uh, sell it. But I don't want that to come across as like I'm trying to sell a fucking game to make some money because it's now limited edition. 
that was never my intent for buying it. Um, I just wanted to paint the models. So, um, yeah. And that's on film too, right? Me saying that I'm just buying it to paint the models and uh, before it was a painting project. So, if anyone's like, you're a fucking scam, s scummy scammer guy trying to make money out of people. I was directing to the stream and tell them they can suck on D's nuts. <laughs> yeah, maybe. A lot better painters in the world than me, mate, I think. I probably paint things a little bit too quickly for them to be considered premium. I do actually want to paint, you know, I'm thinking I'm going to paint a, like a Games Workshop scale model for a display entering a competition, some description. It'd be nice to paint a model in that scale and see how, how far I could push it. I don't think I've done that for a while. About three years, I would think. Yeah, the bad the baddies are why I was keen. There's, there's one model in the goodies. This fucking this fucking red grass brush sucks. The fattest ones. Yeah, I'm, I'm full. Lord Croak would be good actually. That just hits my nostalgia buttons like crazy. Um. Hmm. Yeah, I, I just like painting models, you know, you got, I fucking talk about it too much probably, but just paint because I like painting and like I'm giving away those, the wood elves I painted in as next month's giveaway because um, I'm not that fussed about playing the game, I'm happy to play, Daz was like, hey man, we're going to have a game of thingy, I'd be like, yeah, cool, um, but I'm not that worried about the models disappearing and me never playing with them again. There's a few, there's a few games, there's a few games that I've painted where I'm like, cool, I'm, I'm really happy that I have that in my collection. Um, <laughs> nah, I didn't pick up Bellicor. Um... I might, I'll probably will enter these in uh, in quick QMHE, mate. They, they have a unit category that I'll um they'll probably enter them in. These ones, anyway. Assuming I still have them, I haven't given them away or sold them. Or find I really like the game. Yeah, I got I got some board games in my collection that I'm um pretty convinced I'm not going to give away uh, anytime soon. Uh, in a Blood Rage Rising Sun, I've got a, I've got a shelf of games that I'm keeping, and I've painted models from those. So in the sense that I don't keep a lot of models that I've painted, it's not actually true. I just am not keeping display models that I've painted. I'm keeping some of those models that I've painted for board games. Yes, absolutely, Ajudal. Yep. Um, just to be a subscriber in uh, in next month, and yep, we'll do a draw at the end of the month, and one random subscriber will win them. And if they want the cards and all the stuff that goes with it, I'll send that shit too. If they just want the models. Cool. Send them. The uh, uh, the model for last month's giveaway, Afro Cleese. G'day, Yanama. Um, yeah, Afrocles actually landed in America um, a couple of days ago, so he should be receiving it in the next few days, I think, which is cool. Um, Minimef, 
I reckon most of my display models, it depends on if they're good. Uh, if like if they're good models that I'm like, yeah, this is awesome, or if they're just things that haven't um, gone well. Most of the time, if it's a good one, it'll sell within the first day of me posting social media pictures of it. Um, but yeah, like Daphne, for example, hasn't sold, and I actually think she's really good. Um, but I have a couple of collectors that like my stuff. Um, and usually if I send them a message and be like, hey man, I've got a couple of these things for sale and I'll send them pictures of them, they'll usually buy the ones that, um, that haven't been snapped up by someone else. Um, but I don't usually message them too often and then sometimes they'll actually message and say, hey, can I have that one as well? So, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm really in a pretty fortunate position that, um, it doesn't actually cross my mind that much whether I'm going to sell something or not because uh, it doesn't really matter um, I'm not doing it for a hobby for, for a living so I can just be whenever it happens I haven't seen you mate oh enjoy Nicky Jags uh, let me have a look um, Shark World in a second, mate. I'm just going to do this. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just I don't know about um, Curse City, the game. Like we we just play so many good games, and particularly you know D Dungeon Crawlers, uh, Descent, Gloomhaven. Just so many good games that, and we haven't played. I haven't played Games Workshop board games really, uh, aside from Necromunda, if that counts, which is good fun by the way. But Every Games Workshop game I've played is just, there's gaping flaws. Um, well, Paul, it does depend on the model. I imagine most of the people that buy my gaming models are gamers. Most of the people that buy my display models are collectors. But there's been a few people who've sort of done what I'm, I like to do, which is buy models from people that they like. Um, so they can have a look at some like genuine display models in the flesh and trying to understand how things were done and yeah hey Dan's are on yeah I, I I reckon I've got fuck I'd have probably 15 grand in my in my model case from like the 20 models that I've got <laughs> so and I, I didn't I didn't mean to spend that much <laughs> Uh, but you just build it up over time and yeah so I can understand how people could, could, could collect models from from artists because I love I will pass it every day like five six times every time I'm going to the toilet or whatever I will pass my model case and I look at it and I'm like oh yeah fuck you own that that's fucking mad I'm the fucking best <laughs> That's true. They don't need to. The games don't need to be great to sell to sell shit tons of models. So, but yeah, there's people like me who buy them not for the game, just for the models. Fuck me, the models are so good, so good. I'm gonna try and do Underworld's level of quality on the paint jobs. So sort of this level of quality which would be pretty fun I think uh, Dan Zeron Zeron whatever will be will be the future's not ours to see Dan Zeron Zeron I haven't played enough Underworlds to know all of the various ins and outs, but it doesn't feel like a very 
um, balanced rule set. I like Necromunda, I think Necromunda's their, their most fun game actually. Sharky Sharkwold. Let me read this. We've got Potato Photo Syndrome, so it's a bit uh, a bit hard to provide really analytical feedback. But I agree with your assessment. I like the greys and, and the non-metallic metals. I like the direction they're going. Um, these grieve things are particularly good. Uh, the fur feels slightly wrong. Um, whether it's the tone of the colours. I think it's more the placement of the highlights, mate. I think you've separated the volumes too much. So, you've just got, you've just got too many lines. Like if you look at the top of the, of the thing, where the light's hitting, there shouldn't be shadows in between the lines. There's no shadows there, right? The light's still hitting that top part of the thing. Um, so I think it's just a matter of technically you've got too many shadows in the recesses for it to look right. Um, and they're uh, probably not enough uh, value. Fur tends to be pretty sort of glossy and reflective, so probably go a little bit more. Uh, skin tone feels maybe uh, like you could do more with it. I don't know if it's finished or not. Um, but I sort of, I like where it's going. Like I think it's pretty, pretty interesting um, techniques, interesting looking model. So bully for you. Yeah, Games Workshop paints aren't terrible. They're just fine. They're middle of the road. Probably the biggest weakness I think with Games Workshop paints is how satin they are. I don't like the satin finish. Um, that they have. I think they're too satin. I've got, I've got a little gnome I'm going to paint. Um, I might try and do it tonight actually. I might try and knock it over very soon for uh, for my mum. It's a commission for my mum. actually have uh, quite a lot of time for the GW technical paints. You all know how I feel about contrast paints. Um, there are the other paints are fine. They're really they're adequate range. They, they their coverage is really good. Um, yeah, there, there's nothing wrong with Games Workshop paints. They're overpriced for what they are, absolutely. But hey, it's Games Workshop friends. Yeah, I'm gonna charge her more because it's a fucking gnome. She's lucky it's not a gnome monk, I'll tell you that much. Fucking gnome monks. Would have thrown it out of my fucking desk. Look, Leroy, I think I've got a handle on him. I think I'm pretty comfortable with him.
Yeah, that, that's the one thing you've got to give G-Dub credit for. You've got to give him credit for. Hey! This isn't grey, mate. This is green. You need to calm down. And it's also not finished. I'll fight you. Um, yeah, they make it easy to get into the hobby. Like, that's, that's just the one thing that so many other gaming companies seem to fucking make so much harder. Like, Privateer Press. Absolutely cracking jokes with how hard it is to get into their games. Games Workshop, you've got your, got your perfect you know, little paint thing. This is learn how to paint. You've got your little start collecting boxes. It's just, you've got stores you can go to and ask people questions. It's just, yeah. They know how to bring people into the hobby. Hey, Chris P, what's happening, my friend? I'm just painting some of these bad boys from uh, Crimson Court. Having a great time. Oh, good luck with the COVID jab space toy. Thanks for that. And uh, looking forward to seeing those Nurgle dudes finished up, mate. Streaming today, Chris. They are really fun models to paint, mate. Absolutely. So again, I've been I've been using the AK paints for these for the most part. And they're really good. I'm liking them. They're growing on me. I don't think I'll switch completely, but I'm definitely going to try and use a few of them in uh, in some of my paint schemes. See if I can fuse them with Vallejo and Chimera and the other shit I use. All right. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Get stuck in, mate. Get stuck in. Hey, contrast painter. Da, 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 da. Contrast painter. Da, 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 da. Paint your card. Hey! Is that Mark Masklins? The great man himself? message about that model I want to buy from you. <laughs> You're a superstar. You're one of my favorites. I brought up your, <laughs> I brought your, uh, um, your, the model, the box art you did from um, uh, Michael Contreras up on the stream the other day. I was blown away. Absolutely incredible, mate. One of my heroes. <laughs> uh, we could probably fanboy about him I do all the time so let's just do it what we, what we need to do is get Colwell in here as well <laughs> and then we can have all of the fanboying Thanks for popping by, Mark. What are you working on? Your uh, your paint job on Flammer in the Ultima Phil Kickstarter is glorious.
yeah, these are these are great models, really great models. <laughs> I uh, I was really I was I'll tell a story. I met I met Mark at um, at Monty a few years ago, and I was um, starstruck, starstruck. So that was nice. But um, you know what the worst thing was? He was flying to Australia two days later to travel. Uh, around and do some classes in Australia where they hired a car and hit a kangaroo if I remember rightly <laughs> and uh, and I was just I was still in Europe when they had the class I was I was gutted I desperately wanted to learn from Masculines and Andy and uh, the other cult of paint guy I can't remember who it was I think it was Henry but yeah he was in Australia um, while I was in Europe so I didn't get a chance to go to his class Ooh, Black Sun, cool. Is it that new one that they've teased the pictures of? Ah, oh, thanks Mr. Not So Sinister. The new Black Sun uh, one that um, sculpted by Victor Aguilar. Don't spend points to make me sing. Don't do it. Mark's not here to listen to me sing. He's here to be worshipped. For how amazingly dedicated and hard working he is. <laughs> how have you got 35k Kung Fu? You need to calm down. I did sing a free song at the start. Oh. I think I could probably do that. Sharkboard, what are you doing to me? I'm really sorry, Mark, but people can make make me sing songs when they spend points, so I've got to sing a song. Ah, cool. I look forward to seeing it. <laughs> I stay out too late. Got nothing in my brain. But that's what people say, ooh, that's what people say, ooh, ooh. I go on too many dates, and I can't make them stay, at least that's what people say, ooh, ooh. that's what people say, ooh, ooh. but I keep grooving, can't stop, won't stop moving, it's like I got this music singing in my mind, singing it's gonna be alright. Because the hate is gonna hate, 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 hate. Use a hairdryer, Mark. Get into it, mate. Hairdryer's the best. Dry your models. Hey Rumble.
Oh, hey, thanks, Orthoba Studio. Thanks for the raid, mate. Let me do a quick shout out. <laughs> uh, yes, normal normal life, mate. I have a I have a normal job, and I just do this for fun. So it's good. Some very nice people on here. Good if you're thinking about streaming. Oh, thanks, buddy. <laughs> thanks, Rob. Mark's just giving you a uh, just giving you a subscription, mate. So you're going to go into the draw to win that model that I painted for Alex's Kickstarter. <laughs> oh, how funny would it be if Mark Maslin's won the subscriber giveaway? I wouldn't find it very funny. <laughs> See you, Shark World. Gomez, mate. No, nah, Guzman. Go Guzman. Hot Wings is good too, actually. We have we had Hot Wings the other night. So here's my little vampire friends. I'll do a little bit more on that little winged guy's skin. Look at these cool models. What a cool warband they are. So good. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit more on this guy and then we might quickly paint that gnome. And yeah. Yeah, they're awesome. Awesome models. I love them so much. Let's just tweak this guy's skin. Hey, Kegafort. Well, I, I think the models are just... Um, really cool because you get to have like little snapshots of Games Workshop's lore and history but not be like elaborate big units or armies where you have to have just specific types of the same model you can just have four or five different models it's awesome the game's okay it's not great Ah, cool, man. Well, I'll post some pictures when you do them up. We'll be keen to see them.
the <clears throat> I've been I've been I worked for Games Workshop when I was in my twenties, early twenties, and um, they've got a, the, the 40k aesthetic, the 40k theme. It's pretty unique. It's probably really their only truly unique IP. Although the the recent stuff with AOS has been um, very unique. So, but anyway, well, I guess it's just fantasy space marines, isn't it? But if you ever read the, uh, like, got into the Inquisitor lore and the Necromunda lore, those, those are the things about 40k that I was really interested in. I never really liked Space Marines, Primarchs, and that sort of stuff. But, yeah, Necromunda, whew, love that game. Another one of those things when I was a little fella, like, just desperately wanted to do massive tables of Inquisitor terrain and paint 54 mil Inquisitor models and just have the best time and be like a great hobbyist and I couldn't do any of it I was just awful Blood Bowl's okay. Blood Bowl's a bit of a frustrating game, though, so. Understatement of the century. I don't know if Mark's still here, but if he's, if he's, let's hope he's not. Go and follow him on Instagram if you're not already. He's absolutely just all time, all time. Dead set, one of my heroes. When I was up on stage at SMC with him, it was just like I was pinching myself. Ah. Oh. <laughs> I was trying to say nice things. Go follow him. Masklin's, Mark Masklin's on Instagram. Well, that's a thing. There's probably no one in, no one in this chat <laughs> that isn't following Masklin's. Although, given that he's here, we should probably call him Mark. Like, that's his actual name. So, as opposed to calling him Masklin's. Go follow Mark. <laughs> Aha, Funko Panda. Thank you, mate. Paulie, you should definitely, definitely be following Mark Masklins on Instagram. I'll, uh... Pop a link in a second. Oh, good one, Mittens. He's top five for sure, mate. For sure. Here you go. Follow that guy. Boop, 
But I'll tell you, I'll tell you this, guys, and I say this a lot, guys and girls, friends. Um, I'm sure if you asked Mark uh, how he got to be as good as he is, the answer would be many, many years of hard work, effort, practice, making mistakes, continuing to work hard. And I would say Mark's probably one of the hardest working display painters um, in the industry right now. <laughs> G'day, Bone Shooter. Thanks, thanks, mate. And uh, good luck, Commander Mittens. Have a great day or evening, depending on where you are. <laughs> got to make mistakes, mate. You got to make mistakes, otherwise you don't learn from them. Absolutely, yeah. I'm absolutely uh, nowhere near as good as I would like to be as a miniature painter. Uh, and so I'm just going to keep painting and enjoying painting and get better. Keep practicing, making mistakes, doing crazy stuff. I wrote, I wrote an article about getting better and one of the one of the things in the article that I talked about was getting feedback. Um, you need to get feedback to learn uh, sometimes what you're doing wrong. You can't you can't get better if you don't know what you're doing wrong. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 practice, it's repetition, it's um, hard work, it's effort, it's making sacrifices to continue to improve. Um, Yeah. Oh, thanks, Mini Map. Danzeron, congratulations. Yeah, Chris, that's like that's like such a counterproductive um, thing that you're doing. If you're if you're stopping a model and restarting, what you're basically saying is, uh, what I've done has no value, and that's just not true. Like the value that you have uh, achieved from it is the learnings that you've taken. Even if those learnings are, this is not how I want to do things next time. That's still a learning, right? But I often find it better to just leave something that you've done there to look back at and go, cool, that's that's how I'm not going to do things on this next model. Or come on here, eh, Mini Meth? <laughs> sometimes, um, yeah, sometimes the best thing you can do is just if fuck something up, like do something wrong. Because at least you learn from that. At least you go, cool, I know not to try that next time. Or, 
you learn how to fix it when you do that. But I make mistakes all the time. All the time. Depends on your approach. Um, depends on your approach. Having an ugly phase. Some people don't uh, have ugly phases. Like if you watch uh, Ben Comets or uh, Richard Gray, because they work section by section. There's never a whole model that looks like shit. There's always elements that look ridiculously cool. Um, but yeah, I think. That whole, that whole mindset is that, yeah, sometimes your model's not gonna look the way it is gonna look when it's finished. And that's okay, just keep going. Oh, look, mate, I don't talk massively about my, per well, I suppose I do talk a fair bit about my personal life, but uh, when I look back at my life, the best things that have happened to me, the things that I've learned the most from, have invariably, invariably been the worst things that happened to me in my life. Um, they are the things that have allowed me to reevaluate what was important to me, what I wanted out of my life, and change change my approach to things. So, uh, miniature painting is no different. Sometimes you do something so terribly, and you're just like, "This is the fucking worst thing I've ever painted." But you you take stuff away from that. You learn for the next time. Alright, so we'll talk very briefly about Echoes of Camelot again. So my approach to the gigantic diorama is going to be scene by scene. So the first scene we're going to do is uh, probably going to be the Lady of the Lake and Uther Pendragon. And the reason for that is they were actually uh, two models I wasn't sold on. So they're going to be the first components of the gigantic diorama that we start with. So I'm going to build them um, and build their, their part of the base first. And I'm going to build the, uh, the crypt. I think the scene I'm going to leave for last is Merlin... I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to leave the crypt scene for last, but I'm going to probably struggle with the base on the uh, forest scene the most, because I'd have to do forests, uh, make some trees and stuff. It's going to be exciting. It'll be very exciting. Like I got this music in my mind, say it's gonna be alright. I got one of my um, customers at work brought me in a, uh, a carton of Coronas, so I've got a carton of Coronas over there that I'll probably get into uh, after I finish these. But yeah, really enjoying the speckled hen, mate. Uh, the bases were a combination of 
some colours <laughs> um, that I did. So the first one was this dark green from AK Third Generation. The next was Signal Blue from Vallejo Model Air. The next colour was Cold Flesh from Nocturna. The next colour was Pastel Green from AK. And then the next colours were Dark Angels Green and uh, Achillean Green Citadel Contrast Paints. So very, very simple. <laughs> but I just did a lot of wet in wet, like blending and, and stuff to get it relatively quickly to look like that. Do you know, uh, Sharkwild actually said Hobgoblin Ruby. So I, I said to everyone, send me a message if there's some good beers you want me to try. And he sent me that. I went to Dan Murphy's to try and buy one and they didn't have any. So um, they were out of stock. I'll try and uh, I'll try and find some for sure. Because, um, yeah, because I tried Paul's, Paul's suggestion, which was um, something. Can't remember now. Didn't inspire me the way the speckled hen has. Thanks, Quius. That's amazing. Three months in advance. Tremendous. Well, here's what we're probably doing for the giveaways in the three months. So the first giveaway is this chick. So she's this month's giveaway. Uh, so you could win her this month. <laughs> oh, thanks, Chris P. Next month's giveaway is this one. We're going to give away these... Uh, Wood Elves from Underworlds, this warband, with the rules and stuff if you want them. Yeah, Masculine's just going to win. <laughs> and then the third month will probably be this Walrus from Aradia Miniatures that I'm painting. Probably. Um, when I get around to finish it. Because it's not on there. Yeah, it does have a shark off. Boop, 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 boop. If I finish it. Um, which I'm hoping I will. But I like... Uh, I'm, I'm going to be spending all my time doing my Camelot diorama, so... This might not get touched for a while. I don't know. I like painting bone. It's one of the most interesting colours, I think. Mm. Oh, thanks, mate. My singing is absolutely appalling. So thank you for your uh, kind words. Hey Jan, how are you mate? <laughs> I, I, I have been pinging about this diorama, I know you've only really joined the stream in the last couple of weeks or days Dan's are on, but I've been pinging about this diorama for about three months. <gasps> I'm trained! <laughs> Yeah, the diorama has been consuming me. I've been planning it for months. Absolutely planning it for months. So, it is going to be a big, big deal. 
Alright. I'm sort of at a point with these where I think maybe we call it we call it a day. I don't know, there's I've got some little doodads I want to do. Um I don't think that there's any anything else we need to do to them to make them look really cool, so thanks for the hype train friends, you're all you're all excellent, excellent people. And remember the rules. Just just be don't be fuckwits to each other, eh? That's the rules of the stream and the rules of life. I'm glad you're as enthusiastic as I am, mate, because it's been uh, been a long time coming, and I'm very glad. Ah, oh, good night, Tip Top Baker, mates. Good night. Beautiful Sydney. This plan has not worked the way I hoped it would. I'll have to go to this one. Maybe we can try and mix in the two. Boo, boo, boo! Thanks, War Machine! Boo, boo! What a bunch of legends you are. Yeah, I think we're going to call it on these guys. I am no longer excited about painting them anymore. They look super cool. No, I'm not finishing the stream. I'm going to paint this little gnome. And paint the name. We've got a hype train going, mate. Can't finish a stream with a hype train in mid swing. That's just crazy talk. But we'll definitely do a raid later on, for sure. Raid, 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 raid! <laughs> All right. I'm gonna put these guys up here so they're out of the way. So this model, this is this is the, the funny story about this model. My mum sends me a text the other day. I talk talk to my mum all the time. She's a good good egg. She goes, "Hey, can you paint this model for me?" <laughs> it's fuck. I was like, "What?" <laughs> she goes, "Yeah, one of my friends at work plays Dungeons and Dragons, and she wants this model painted." And I said, "Oh, my son paints models. I'll get him to paint it for you." I was like, "All right, I'll paint you this model." So it's supposed to be a little gnome. A little gnomey gnome, so we're gonna paint it uh, and have some fun. And just do some rapido, mucho rapido gnomo. <laughs> Haven't told her how much I'm charging her yet. <laughs> Suck shit, wall. So I think this is a Reaper Bones um, model. Looks like one of the Pathfinder Goblins actually from uh, the Pathfinder range. It's not a gnome. But uh, yeah, not a great sculpt. Not a great sculpt. So we're probably just going to focus on doing some some areas with some good level of detail and then the rest we're just going to use some washes and stuff um, I am I am very fast yes masculines mr. masculines mr. mark I tend to do things pretty quickly and not very good Fucking names, man. They're the worst. They're the worst race. 
I just is so bad. <laughs> really awful. Really awful race. Like, what do they even do? They just want to be halflings. Oh, the other, the other piece of uh, the other piece of information I got. <laughs> yeah, Macho Rapido. Oh, thanks, Wes. Mucho Rapido. Yes, that's that's about the extent of my Spanish. I think I can say uh, Buenos dias. Because when I was in when I was in Seville, I was in Seville for that um, for SMC in Monte. Where I travelled to Seville, and so I learned how to say a few things in Spanish. What, what about Wes, everyone? What a guy. He's just making the hype train keep on going. You're right, Okinoba, Okinoba. It is a goblin. You are absolutely correct. But I have to, I've been instructed to paint it as a gnome. And so I shall. Rapid Transit, welcome! Indeed, indeed, we shall. Had a great time in uh, in Seville actually, and we also went to a little town called Merida, uh, which is halfway between Lisbon and Seville, which is why we decided to go there. We stayed there for the night. It was really great, really great little town. Some awesome ruins and stuff, Roman ruins throughout the town. Cool little place. I'd say a funny story though. So my girlfriend and I, we, we, we're walking around the town. We, we rock up. We arrived at about I reckon three o'clock. Um, and we checked into our hotel and we were like, oh, let's go for a walk around the town. I'm really excited about, you know, checking out this town. Because we'd, we'd read some reviews of people that said it's a really nice place to go, you know, lots of cool little things. So we go walking around the town and I swear to you, it was like a fucking ghost town. Shops were closed, fucking everyone was, there was no one walking around. We were just, we were like, this, this place fucking sucks. Like there's nothing happening here. Place is like closed down. <laughs> anyway, we obviously in Australia we don't we don't do this little thing called a siesta, which is where in the middle of the day everyone just just packs up shop and goes and has a fucking lie down. <laughs> so literally, we walk around at like three three o'clock to five o'clock when it's super hot in the middle of the day, and everyone's just doing fuck all. So we're like, okay, let's go out for dinner. We went out for dinner at like six o'clock. No restaurant opens. Like we, we normally eat at six thirty, seven o'clock. <laughs> it's no restaurant open. So we're trying to find a place to eat. We're both hanging. We're so hungry, and nowhere was open. So we ended up going to this little this little restaurant that doubled as a, as a bar. Um, and we ended up having a few glasses of wine before we uh, before we could eat because we had to come up with something to do. And, uh, yeah, so what ended up happening was we, oh, we sat, we sat down at the thing, we had a couple of glasses of wine and then eight o'clock rolls around and I'm like, ding, because if I don't eat, I'm, I'm a, I'm a terror. So I was like, ready to go. Let's order some food. Like as soon as eight o'clock ticked over, I was like, come take my food order, please. But it was awesome food. And, and anyway, so we're walking back from the restaurant at like 9.30 after we finished dinner. And the place is pumping. There's fucking shops everywhere. There's little kids running around the street. Everything was going crazy. It was so good. We we're like, Merit is the best. Just because we've been there during siesta. Um, so yeah, yeah, Ma uh, Mark. We went to we went to Seville and uh, had an amazing time. Sevilla, Sevilla. Had an amazing time. Really loved it. Um, and we actually talked about going to Barcelona. We, we, were, we were planning on doing a drive um, from Seville all the way up the coast 
um, and all the way to Barcelona and stopping at um, some of those other places. There's a couple of places where they filmed Game of Thrones that I wanted to go to and stuff. But in the end, we just didn't have enough time. So, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do Barcelona probably next next trip, I think, because we really really loved Spain. Um, the people were really nice and the food was awesome. Uh, like in Seville, we just we we had the best time. We sat on the uh, on the rooftops in our restaurant on our, in our hotel. A couple of couple of jugs of sangria, dancing around, we had a great time. Awesome. Choo-choo. Choo-choo. We should all thank Wes, friends. Wes is a great guy. What a dude. Giving out free subos. We should also thank that other chap who gave Mark a sub. I think that was Rob Kelly. Well done. Good work, team. It's very nice of you all. Um, I'm just going to see if I've got any photos from my trip in, in Seville that I can uh, that I can show off. Let me check my phone. I had a great time. My, my screensaver at the moment is actually uh, my girlfriend in the, um, the square. The, what's that thing in Seville called? The big square? I can't remember. Let's see if I've got any good ones that I can quickly show. I have to scroll through about 500 photos from Monty. <laughs> uh, we went to we went to a little cool town called uh, now I can't even think of it. Little island, little island way down south. Uh, fuck, what's the name of it? Just near Seville. It'll come to me. Cool place, cool places. Oh yeah, this, I'll, I'll show you this one, because this is mad. Yeah, we, we do, hey Xtab. Yeah, we go to the museums. We love love the like like castles and stuff. I was actually thinking the other day, I was talking about my favorite castles, and I completely forgot uh, this incredible castle. I'm gonna show you a picture of it. I'm gonna show you a picture of this castle, because it's fucking the best. Um, and I took a great fucking photo of it. Uh, all right, so I'm going to show you. This is this is a picture of um, uh, my uh, Merida, some some ruins in Merida. So that little place I was telling you about. Um, so yeah, that's right in the middle of the city. You're just walking through, and all of a sudden you're just like, bang! There's a temple to Apollo or something. Um, super cool. Uh, but yeah, I'll show you this. Uh, I'll show you this picture. So we went to Denmark in um, the year before, and we stayed at uh, in Copenhagen. And um, one day we decided to do a trip where we travelled up uh, from Copenhagen up on a train up to the top of uh, um, uh, Copenhagen to a place called Helsingor, and we went to uh, the Kronborg, which is a castle, very famous castle, um, and I was, I was like, oh, this is the fucking coolest castle I've ever been to in my life, and then we went to another one, which is called Friedrichsborg, and this photo I'm about to show you is from Friedrichsborg, and it is the greatest castle I reckon I have ever been to, it is just ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous, so, um, this is Friedrichsburg from the back in the gardens. It was just majestic. And actually we got kicked out because the day we went there, um, the, the princess of Denmark is actually Australian and her husband's Prince 
I don't remember his name. Um, but yeah, he, he was actually coming to visit Friedrichsburg um, on that day. It's this tiny little town. It was on a little train stop, a uh, tiny little town um, called... Uh, something. I remember because I said I'd live there. Yeah. Oh, it's just incredible. I was absolutely blown away. Hillerod, there you go. It's called Hillerod was the town. Just beautiful, beautiful gardens, amazing to walk around. It was just so cool. So yeah, my favourite castle would either be Penna Palace in uh, Lisbon or Portugal, uh, Friedrichsborg in Denmark, The little one we went to in Seville was great too. I got told I gotta to make this look like a girl. How the fuck am I supposed to make this look like a girl, Suzanne? You're killing me, Wall. Uh, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, Wampor, I haven't actually been to Neuschwanstein. It's one of the only castles I haven't been to. I've been to Germany a couple of times, but I've never been to that one. And it's, um, yeah, it's obviously the, one of the most famous castles in the world. Um, I would love to go there. But, uh, yeah, I haven't, um, haven't been, so... Uh, Diorama, Diorama Sprees is a website where um, you can purchase modeling supplies that are really, uh, really, really high quality. Um, modeling supplies meaning like diorama, um, trees, plants, rocks, stuff like that. Looks really, really cool quality stuff. I've never bought from them. Ah, oh, see you, Mark. Thanks, thanks so much for. Stopping by, mate. I'll talk to you soon. You're a superstar. You too. Stay safe. Uh, well, she's got a midnight cloak. She's got a cloak of midnight blue. I'm going to try and give her some makeup. That'll make her look a little more feminine. We'll be fine. I was just talking rubbish before I know how to make it look like a girl. As long as we're going for a prostitute look. <laughs> uh. uh, yeah, it is definitely the right spelling. I actually sent myself the link because I kept forgetting what the link was. Hang on. Uh, yeah, that's it. Here it is. Stand by. Yeah, my problem was I ended up, I was going to, I was probably going to drop about a thousand bucks there. <laughs> Alright, see you, Wampa. Um, yeah, I was literally, I was just fucking spending money. I was like, oh yeah, this looks fucking mad. I'll buy this. This looks mad. And I, I looked at my car and I had like a thousand bucks worth of trees. I thought that's probably a bit excessive, don't I? Probably just need to calm down on the tree buying, mate.
Sure. Is anyone else tripping balls about Maslin's? <laughs> I can be in the chat. <laughs> oh, I am. Oh, I actually am. What a legend. How weird is it when one of your heroes comes and starts you in your life? Oh, g'day, mate. <laughs> I tell you, I think I said this the other day. Like, I, I'm yet to meet someone from the from the the painting, like that display painting world. It's just not like a really lovely person. Like, Mark's really nice when when I met him, and like I I, I, I fanboyed so hard when I went up to Lucas Painter the first Monty. I was there, so Lucas won uh, best in show at Monty um, the year right, the first year I went. And uh, he debuted, I think the wise woman actually debuted at that uh, event for the first time. And I went up to him and, and he's, he, doesn't, he doesn't speak great English. Um, uh, but I just went up to him and said, oh man, I'm Trent from Australia. I'm a you know, massive fan of your stuff and stuff. And I, I was so tongue-tied and I was like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm really nervous and stuff. <laughs> and he was, he was great. He's like, oh, hi, Trent. Uh, it's nice, nice to meet you. And... This is stuff. I don't think he knew me from a bar of soap. Um, but it was so great. And yeah, I met Mark. I met Sergio. Hey, Elinia. <laughs> it was just, it's just so cool. Um, um, I, I love Marco's. Hello, guys. Marco here. I love Marco. Um, I have, um, James Wapple is, uh, is a crazy, crazy dude who does a lot of crazy oil painting and crazy stuff and crazy energy all the time. Um, I have raided him once or twice. Uh, his style of painting is not really up my alley, so I don't really watch his stuff. Um, yeah, it is good to know, isn't it? It's just going to have to be me and Colwell banging the varnish drum then, I think. See if we can get, convert some people over. But I love Marco's YouTube videos. I've never watched him on stream. Actually, I watched him on YouTube stream the other day for about five or ten minutes. I said hello. Mm. He seems like a real character, eh? Let's cheat on the rest. Oh. It probably is a bit weird, mate. Yeah, probably is a bit weird. You don't need to be me. You need to be you. But I can understand wanting to paint faster, mate. But speed comes with practice. So if you want to get faster, I would challenge you to just paint more. Yeah, I, I think, uh, I mean, I don't really know James Wapple that well as a human being, um, but I really like his energy. I really like the way he approaches it. He seems to paint because he likes it, eh? Just loves doing it, so bully for him. 
It is Wes. Yes, that's Jim from Stainbeard. Great supporter of the show. I would say that he sent me free models, but he hasn't. I purchased them because I like to support him. But he's going to ask me to write an article soon, aren't you, mate? Can't just have Colwell writing fucking articles. That guy sucks. Nobody cares about his stupid drop shadows, for fuck's sake. Can I go Fort Stonebeard's just uh, a, an Australian supplier, mate. So you can have a look at the minis that are on there, but they're just from uh, from fairly well-known brands, Black Crow, Black Sun, all that sort of gear, just in Australia, that's all. If I remember rightly, you are not in Australia, Kego Fort. You are in the United States of America. Correct. Today is such a great day. I can't believe it. I got my fucking Camelot models. I get Mark Maslin's coming into my chat. And I get to paint a model for my mum. Isn't that great? What a day. What a glorious day. I might paint one of those Camelot models at 30, the 35 mil scale for a competition or something. That could be fun. And then sell them for a D&D model. Someone afterwards. Yeah, that might be the go. Oh, thanks Nightbot. What a chap. What a chap you are. Almost 10 to 1. Almost. I would rarely use pure black or pure white at any point up until like really late um, highlights or shadows. But I'd go very, very close. Uh, how much do I jump? Well, I probably jump more than I need to. Uh, or more than I should, rather. Because I want to do things quickly. Um, so I tend to jump quicker than I should, but you can cover that. You can sort of cheat your way around that with the airbrush. So, uh, I reckon, I reckon probably one or two steps per, per transition.
Uh, thanks, Glamanda fan. 99. Alright, we do need to do a varnish on those uh, vampires, pods, by the way. And put some static grass on the bases later. I reckon they're done. I think they're pretty good. Hi, I'm a gnome and I don't wear shoes. Because actually I'm a halfling. Because gnomes fucking shit. Just pretending halflings. Fuck you, gnomes. You fucking useless fucks. Seriously, though, how bad are fucking gnomes? Look, has a race. Oh, hey! That's okay. Where are you from? Where are you from, Glamander fan? Morgan? Dunkerson coming onto my stream. That's about all I got. Sorry. Yeah, he's, he's very, she, she's very small. It's a, it's a fun story, actually. Um, my mum, what a legend. I remember my mum back in the day. She's not religious or anything. or But she was worried when I bought my first D&D &D book. <laughs> she was like, oh. I've heard about this stuff. Very protective of me, my mum. Don't know if you should be getting into this. It's like, it'll be fine, mum. It'll be fine. I, I called a wall. I've called a wall since I was about seven. And the reason I call a wall is because that, her nickname is Wally. Based after a TV commercial that used to happen in Australia that had a, a monkey. My mum used to paint. My mum used to paint uh, oil paintings. She used to watch Bob Ross. That's actually where one of the ways that I that was familiar with Bob Ross. She used to do oil paintings. She doesn't do anything like that now. But yeah, when I was little, she used to paint. And so she got nicknamed by my dad and her brothers and sisters, who were all very close, pretty close family. Uh, she got nicknamed Wally after this painting monkey from... Uh, these TV commercials. So everyone just used to call a wall. And little, little young Deno, he just starts following the trend. So I've called my mum wall since I can remember. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so she's, uh, she's a funny old bird, old Waldo. She's really cool. Um, very, very intelligent, hardworking great person but it's funny to think back then she was like oh yeah look out for that Dungeons and Dragons stuff and now here she is asking me to paint a Dungeons and Dragons model for a fucking one of her work mates uh, it's a 
funny thing life sometimes, isn't it? There was a, there was a painting in our in our house that my mum did that was of a windmill, and I reckon. <laughs> I sincerely suggest that, Paul, you can uh, get stuffed. I shan't be having a name as my display model. It was just this little windmill piece. I reckon, look, looking back at it now, I'm sure it was just one that she'd, that she'd like followed along with Bob. Um, but it was awesome. i tell you, one, one of my favourite memories, this will, this will sound really lame, but... One of my favourite memories when I was a, like of when I was a young young. I think I've talked about this little shop that used to be near my house called Dragon's Keep. We used to live near this little game shop called Dragon's Keep and back then it was like um there wasn't a game shop on every corner, it was like a really big deal. Um and uh first time I went in there I was just like, Oh my god, this place is like the best heaven. And uh anyway, I used to just want to go down there and hang out. I didn't really have any uh, any reason to go down there. My, a couple of my mates were going down there one day, and uh, my mum came in and just knew I was, I was just about to get picked up, and she just quickly she gave me a ten dollar note and said, "Here you go, here you go, buddy. Just buy yourself something today." And I bought a, a Nurgle uh, Plague Marine Champion. And I vividly remember the model because it's my favourite model that. I think I've ever bought because my mum gave me to we, we, we had fuck all money right when, I, when we were growing up my mum and dad go all right now they're both they're both on good coin good jobs but back in the day we didn't have a lot of money and like <clears throat> I never didn't need or anything like that but we yeah dad used to have to ride his bicycle to work because he we couldn't afford to have um, my mum used to work night shift just to keep us uh, able to go to school and stuff but anyway yeah so she just came in and gave me 10 bucks to go and buy a little Nurgle um, model and yeah I still to this day remember that interaction and how that made me feel yes one of my favourite sayings uh, in my workplace is uh, people might forget uh, what you say that's a bit People will forget what you say. They might forget what you do, but they'll never forget how you make them feel. And that is a prime example because of how I felt on that day, and I vividly remember that moment in my life. So, there you go. Yeah. Good on you, buddy. Well, we are definitely over time on stream <laughs> that's okay I sort of wanted to finish this model uh, tonight so that I can drop it by my mum's work tomorrow or the day after yeah she, she fucking drives me mental these days <laughs> fucking lol She's always like, oh, when is your fucking girlfriend going to come to family functions? I'm like, no, mate, she doesn't fucking like it. She doesn't like family functions. She's not coming. It's just Big Dano. Just suck it up. Oh, we just really wanted to come. Fuck off, Walt. 
What am I seeing, Joe Skynet? Mama! Ooh, any way the wind blows, I don't want to die. Sometimes wish I'd never been born at all. I see a little silhouette of a man. Scaramouche, Scaramouche, will you do the fandango? Thunderbolts of lightning, very, very frightening me. Galileo, 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 Galileo Figaro. And is he oh, 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 oh. Oh, mamma mia, mamma mia, mamma mia, let me go. The owl's boot has the devil put aside for me, for me, for me. So you think you can stop me and spit in my eyes? So you think you can love me and leave me to die? Oh, baby, can't do this to me, baby. Just gotta get out. Just gotta get right out of here. Bam, 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 bam. Oh, thank you. It's been a great day. It's been a great day. Yeah, look, it's it's hard to paint models that aren't sculpted well, mate. I, I would never recommend these as, like, a starter. And people give advice often, which is, like, just go buy yourself some shit models to learn to paint on. It's not your best bet. Um, I would always recommend you go and buy yourself some Games Workshop push fit models because at least you know the quality, the detail is going to be good. It'll cost you about, you know, 50 bucks more probably, but you can actually learn from what you're doing, so... Uh, yeah, my neighbours, my neighbours, um, they're pretty close. <laughs> I haven't had any complaints yet, actually. I'm expecting, I'm expecting at some point they'll just trundle over. I live in a little apartment block, but the walls are pretty thick. <laughs> yeah, Underworld's boxes are good, yeah, for sure. I see a little silhouette of a man. Scaramouche, Scaramouche, will you do the fandango? He's just a poor boy, nobody loves me. He's just a poor boy from a poor family, sparing his life from this monstrosity. Do, 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 do. Easy come, easy go, will you let me go? If you love, no, he will not let you go, let him go. If you love, no, he will not let you go, let him go. Will not let you go, will not let you go, let you go, will not let you go, no, oh, 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 I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't steer people towards a bust or or a or a large scale model because I think 
you'll, you'll learn brush control much quicker doing this. It was Arnak we played a little while back. June Imperium was one that was on my radar. I nearly bought it because it's supposed to be quite good solo. Um, and I do do quite like playing a few solo games, but um, yeah, I didn't end up pulling the trigger on it and, uh, and I've sort of cooled on it a bit now, uh, given that my painting's taken over. Yeah, I don't know actually. Uh, yeah, I think I did the other day. I think I did the other day. Uh, what was I going to do? Hang on, just... Mm, cool. Yeah, let me know what it, how it is, mate, because I'm I'm keen to know if it's good. We might we might have a little double, but um, yeah, it's not high on it's not high on our radar at the moment. We're um, uh, yeah, we're probably probably about probably about done on euros for a little while actually, because I, I went I've been trying to get everyone to play the top uh, thirty games with me, and a lot of fucking euros in the top thirty, believe it or not. Uh, so yeah, the last few weeks we played. Concordia, we've played uh, um, Feast for Ode and all these other ones that are just like really intense Euros. So there, um, yeah, we did we did uh, raid Dusty Telephone about a week ago, and she was playing Skellies and some graveyard terrain. I recall now. might use metals on this, what do you reckon? Like actual metallic paints. has the devil put aside for me, for me, for me. Oh, yeah, Kung Fu Oath. I actually, I was on the Kickstarter for that and I didn't, I didn't end up, um, buying it because I thought that there was nothing that was Kickstarter exclusive so I was like yeah maybe I'll just uh, maybe I'll just leave it go and see the reviews because it, it's it felt very like out there in terms of what it was trying to be and I just had no idea if they were going to be able to pull it off so in the end I decided I'll just I'll wait and see what the reviews are like and um, it's getting pretty good reviews still so that's a good sign We're happy that she looks female enough, friends. Yeah, I like Root. I've got I've got all the expansions for Root. Lotus flower tattoo. Eh, maybe we could do a little tattoo, a little, a little, a little freehand or something. Yeah, let's do a little freehand. Um, I don't know what though. Yeah, let's just do like a little, we'll use a small brush actually. Don't be, don't be fucking that, that arrogant, you know. <laughs>
Yeah. The problem with Root, I think I, I think I may have mentioned this before, the problem with Root is it's such a like clever game, right? But you literally have to play, I reckon, four or five times um, before... You, you you understand how the other factions work and you can actually play the game in a way that is like actively trying to fuck up other players which is how you have to play it to be to be really getting the best out of it um and that's that's his only real flaw as a game is it's just the barrier to entry is so crazy G'day, babe. But yeah, I, I would um, I would quite happily sit down and play a game of Root, but uh, the thing that... I'm, I'm the teacher, right? I'm the guy who has to teach you on how to play the games. So I, instead of teaching one game, I have to teach five games when we play Root because you have to teach each player how to play their fucking faction, and it's all different. Yeah, it is. It is hard to. Um, it is hard to win that game if you get picked on, which is why I find it hard to win that game. Because <laughs> everyone always fucking makes a beeline for me. All right, she looks pretty feminine, I think. I'm going to call it uh, a day there, friends. I'm just going to do some quick Varda. Oh, yeah, Food Chain Magnate. Yeah, cool. That's actually on, on my list to play this year because it's in the top 30. So I'm uh, really excited to play it. But I promise Freezy we won't play any more fucking Euros for a while. <laughs> you, just, you can just see his brain melting when, he, when we play him. He's just like... <laughs> He's good at him, but he just... Yeah, he just... He doesn't think... He doesn't, like, work far enough ahead sometimes. And it just, it, yeah, it just fucks his brain when he's trying to think that far ahead. Whereas me and Wedgie, we're always like ahead of the game. So it's for Euros. But Freezy kills us when it comes to uh, certain styles of games. And Koki beats us at a few games. Yeah, I'm just going to finish up very soon, Mittens. I'm, I'm, I did this little friend, this little name friend, so... I'm going to quickly uh, varnish. And then I'll paint those little swords tomorrow, probably, and I'll varnish these guys. Mate, I just I follow a lot of artists on Instagram, as I'm sure most of you do, and there will be uh, opportunities that pop up where it says this model for sale. And I will just jump on that opportunity. I'll just be like, yep, I shall buy that. See you, Celery. You're a superstar. I do, yes, I do dilute the varnish. So this is a, a mixture of airbrush dinner and uh, Scarl, uh, AK matte varnish. Oh, oh, fish finger sangers. Fuck, I haven't had that for a while. Cool, mate. Big call. My Lord of the Sandwich is uh, a little restaurant in Florence called Alla Antico something, I think. And uh, and they're the best sandwiches I've ever eaten. Ooh. The first time I went there, it was, I don't know, about one o'clock. And... I just wandered over 
to the sandwich shop because it looked good. And there was a line. There was a line of about 30 people at this sandwich shop. And I was like, well, this must be good. So while I'm standing in this line, there's a bakery on the other side of the road. I'm just watching this dude from the sandwich shop. He just like, every five minutes, he's just walking over the road to the bakery. And he's just fucking picking up this fucking steaming bread, like Italian bread from the bakery. And he's just fucking throwing it down on the table and the guys are just cutting this fresh bread. And then you go inside and it's just got all these beautiful Italian meats, Italian cheeses, all homemade. And, it, and, and basically you just walk in there and they don't have a menu. They, this is about the first time I went there. They have a menu now. But they don't have a menu. They were just really popular on Yelp or whatever the fuck it was back then. And they just, it just says, go in and just say, make me a sandwich. <laughs> and they just make you a sandwich and they'll fucking throw stuff on there. So I had this one that was like spicy, um, spicy sauce, um, beautiful, just thick, fresh slices of mo mozzarella. Um, and it was like pancetta or something, just on this fresh bread. And it's just the best. And I, that, was the, that was the first time I went, it was in 2012. And I said to my girlfriend, when we went overseas, we're going to Florence and I'm going to my fucking sandwich shop. She said, you're an idiot for talking about a sandwich shop as being the place you want to visit when we go back to Europe. So I took her to the sandwich shop and we went there four times. And when we went back to Europe the following year, G'day Maka, we also went to Florence and went to the sandwich shop at least twice a day, I reckon. And they're five fucking euros for a massive sandwich. I wonder if I've got a picture of it. I'll fucking see if I can find my sandwich picture. Fucking hell, they're the best singers. So good. Man, love them. I'm sure I took a photo of the singers. I'm sure I took a photo of it. Spain. Oh, yes. <laughs> Two photos of the singers coming up. They're so good. And then we'll go do a raid. <laughs> Sandwiches. Yes. Man, I'm banging one of these now. Oh my God. That is, that is, the, I'm actually hungry now. Just thinking about this. Fish finger sandwiches and this sandwiches. Mate, this guy. Fresh bread, meat, sauce, lettuce, mozzarella. Magnificent. That was my one. And you see my girlfriend in the background just mugging down on hers. This is hers. Wait till you see this bad boy. Oh. Look at that. <laughs> it's just, it's just the freshness, like, of the ingredients and the purity of the ingredients. It just, it's like, it's like the, the best sandwich I've ever eaten in my life. And I, I can just, <laughs> and it's because not, not, not lots of stuff, just like each of these, but each of these pure perfection. Florence, the city of Florence is called Alla Antico Firenze, I think. Oh, fucking hell. So good. Yeah, you sit in Florence and you're, you know, walking down the Ponte Vecchio or the Ponte Vecchio, I can't remember. It's been a fucking two years and there's been a whole little COVID so. All right, friends. Great, great stream tonight. You're all superstars. Let's. Um, I'm going to leave that sandwich on the thing there, and uh, you can all just mull over that while I find someone to raid. I'll show you the vampires before we before we finish raiding. But let's see who's painting. Before we finish raiding, let's see who. Uh, miniature figures. Miniature figures. All right, we've got Dusty Telephone. She's painting the black coach. We have raided her before. Mike Moans, he's a superstar. We raided him. He's a classic guy. Uh, what's this one? Commissar Orza. I like raiding people that we haven't raided where, where possible. 
What do all the different rivers do? Wait, what do you mean what the different rivers do? Not a fan of that. Bro, Zerk. Oh, is there an Aussie streaming? Tremendous. I'll go find that. Uh, Crocodile. Let's see. Where's that guy? Hey. I love an Aussie. Let's raid that guy. Cool. Good work, friends. Good pick up. Hey, uh, thanks for a great, great stream tonight. I had a blast. I'm excited to start sharing the, uh, the wonder that is Camelot on stream with you all soon. Here's my vampires. Had fun. They're all legends. Let's raid another Aussie. Crocodile! See you guys! I very much appreciate it, and I hope you enjoy some demonet emotes. I'm, I feel really bad. Uh, okay, that's, that's getting the...